Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to talk about collections and their memory footprint and performance, how fast they are. And uh, first off I'm going to talk a little bit about array list. It's something that is very commonly used and something that I use a lot in my work and I didn't know um, when I started to make this video that array list actually is one of the most performant of uh, the types that we have. If we have simple arrays then they are very performant for their purpose because they are just a bunch of memory that is actually just a flowing part of memory. So if you have an, an array of things that's one piece of memory and then you have pointers into that memory. An array list is pretty much the same thing but it has the functionality to reorder things, it has functionality to grow and change its capacity to actually have a lot more in it. And that functionality is something that makes it very extensible and very easily used. So I, I like ArrayList a lot, and just because it's just a bunch of memory, it's, it's very fast as well. And then the next type that we're going to talk about is the linked list. It's also very performant, and it could be used in a, a totally different context than the ArrayList. Uh, the good thing by a linked list is that it is very fast to create new uh, elements and so on. And it's also very fast to traverse. But it's not that fast to actually reorder, sort or um, perhaps actually get a specific value in the linked list. It's fast but not as fast as an array list. And as you see here, a linked list is actually something where you have a pointer into the list and then every item in the list has pointer to the items to the left and to the right of them. And uh, it's very easy to go through the list from uh, start to finish or from finish to start and so on. But getting an item in the middle or reordering the list might take a little bit more time. Uh, next up, I'm going to talk about the hash map. It's also uh, something that I use very commonly. And the nice part with the high hash map is that they actually have keys ordered by hashes. So this illustration might not be the best illustration, uh, but think of it as a sorted array list where each key is pointing to a value somewhere. So you can very easily and fast fetch some item from this hash map and then get the value of that key. And as it is, just like the array list, something that is contiguous, it's very easily to very easy to uh, go through it and uh, iterate over all the elements and so on. So it's also pretty fast. Um, but a hash map can't really be sorted because every key is pointing to a hash value uh, that in turn points to a value and that hash value is built up by po some part of the key. So ordering a hash map doesn't really make sense. Then we have a tree map. Um, tree map is also an interesting structure where everything is put into a tree that is some part, some kind of weighted tree so you can actually get down and find the specific value very fast. Um, it could be ordered and sorted and so on. Uh, but the, the good part here is that it actually is very fast to traverse and actually binary find your way down this tree in order to go to a specific node. So it's very fast in, in lookups. But it takes a little bit more memory and takes a little bit more time to create items. Next up we have the tree set. It's very similar to the tree map and they have a very similar structure and are, have pretty much the same memory footprint. But a tree set is also just something that you put values into. And the interesting thing about sets is that set can only have a value once. So if you put something into a tree set, 
or in the case of a hash map that you put a specific key in, then that key can repeat. You have always one of those keys. So if you want unique items, then a tree set could be a really good option for you. A hash set could also be a very good option. It's the same as a hash map. The only difference is that it's only values. So uh, that's if you want something that is unique, but it's not that good at sorting things. Even though a tree set and a tree map can be sorted because of their tree nature, but uh, they are not as fast to be sorted as an array list and a linked list. And uh, next up we have the linked hash map. So this is something that is pretty similar to a linked list, uh, but it has values as well. So uh, actually fetching a key somewhere in there takes a little bit more time, uh, but as it hash has as hashes as well, the lookup can be really fast um, because you can go to a specific key and going through them from head to tail is also fast because you have these uh, double linked values between them uh, and the values are connected to each of the keys. Um, the big drawback with a uh, linked hash map is that it actually takes a very large footprint. So it's a very memory consum consumptive uh, thing that we are uh, defining here. So if you are using this, it's just because you want to fetch something from memory very fast and you're not concerned in of how much it will grow. So if you want something that is small, a linked hash map might not be what you want. And last but not least, we have the array DQ and other queuing formulas. And as you see here, you only have a head and a tail and some values between there. Uh, and the really interesting thing here is that uh, array DQ or a prioritized queue, that it's another one of those, is that they are very fast to fetch items out of it but you can't really, by any fast measure, get values somewhere inside of the queue. You always take either from the top or the bottom and uh, iterating over them is not that fast either. They are very um, performance heavy on actually putting values on the queue and pu uh, pulling uh, or popping values off the queue and they have a very small memory footprint as well. So let's look at some code. And in this case, um, it's one thing to actually say that something is small or large, fast or slow. But in this case, if you really want to know how proficient something is at a specific task, the only thing you can do is actually test it. And in my case here, I just wanted to test how large does a data structure get and how fast can I enter item into the data structure. And uh, this is if you want to build very large data structures, you know which structure should I use for my really large data set and to keep it in memory and actually um, be able to work with it. Maybe. Maybe this is not applicable to your case. Maybe you're more interested in how fast can I fetch item from the list or the map and so on. And then you write a different test. So these tests I have here are pretty similar, all of them. I have some test runner here. So I run a test. I send in a value and that's how many iterations it should do. And then I have my array list. So I create my array list first here. I add some items to this array list, as many as the value that I send in. And then I send in the name uh, here as well, array list. And then I have pretty much the same for linked list, hash maps, and so on. All these values could be V. I haven't changed those. Let's do that fast here. Uh, but you see that I do the same thing for all of these prioritized queue I have it in at the bottom here. So this is all the types that we have talked about so far. So let's look at the test runner here. 
it's also very simple. I take this int consumer in that we looked at here. So this is the function that I want to run. I have my string name here that I first sleep for a little while. Uh, I get the current time in milliseconds. I get the currently used memory and set two longs for that. I run my iterations here. So I use f accept and send in 100,000 iterations. And then I do just a printout of the time that elapsed between when I started the operation and after uh, the operation. And a thing to note here is that this is not scientific. It's not exactly how fast does it take to actually add 100,000 items, but you can compare the values between runs. And the problem you can have is you if you have too large numbers, then you will actually run into GC. So you actually do garbage collection and garbage collection takes time as well. So I didn't want to take too large structures because if I did that, I would have time diffs that I didn't want to counter in. So I picked a pretty small value, but I could still see a difference in time. And then I uh, print out the uh, currently used memory and in a format the size as well. So I know uh, if it's bytes, kilobytes, megabytes and so on. Uh, so that's pretty straightforward. We could look at this format size also. This is something that I copy pasted from the internet. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's just uh, if it's uh, less than a kilobyte, you just write a byte after, and then they count how many uh, iterations you have. So if you, uh, if it's kilobytes, uh, megabytes, gigabytes, terabytes, petabytes, and etabytes, so this said value will tell you which. Uh, which amount it is, if, if how large it is. And then uh, you divide your value with this large number. And uh, when you have done that, you also print out the letter here. So if we have kilobytes, then it's a K, then M, G, T, P, E. Um, and then you have a string format here. So it's, it's pretty easy function as well. And uh, a really nice one if you want to just take a number of bytes and see how large are they. Uh, so you get a good um, presentation of that. And then currently used memory, I just get the heap memory and the non-heap memory usage and add them together. So the, this is pretty much how I made my measurement that I have seen in the video so far. Uh, I hope that you found this uh, video interesting and that you learned something today and maybe you uh, look a little bit different uh, at the structures that we use every day in the Java language. I um, really wanted to make a test of this because we had a discussion at work and we were looking into what kind of data structures we actually wanted to use in our programs. So I wanted to test it out. So I had more data to that discussion. Uh, if you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. Thank you for watching and I really hope to see you in the next video.